Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Donovan here with Trumpet Thoughts. Uh, it's been a while since the last post. I've been working on some interesting stuff, having some good results with it, thought I'd kind of share. Uh, lately, I've been working quite a bit with some stuff through um, the, from Greg Spence at Mystery to Mastery. And uh, as always, I think Greg has a lot of good ideas, especially if you've gotten yourself, especially your head game kind of stuck um, and you can feel that you're not doing what you should be doing, but you kind of have no clue where you're gone wrong and you're just lost in your head about it. Greg's just the mad scientist that has kind of figured that out to crack the code to help you get out of your headspace and to think more clearly. And don't get me wrong, it's not all just like mental, uh, you know, think positive type stuff. It, it's He's breaking down the physical elements of playing the trumpet. It's super useful. Um, but then about a month ago, I took a lesson with Jim Manley, and it's worth kind of sharing. I've taken several lessons with Jim over the years, going back to my college years, so that's going back over 20 years now. And I think I just, I always enjoyed the time. I could never understand what he was trying to describe to me, because it, his his philosophy on the trumpet was so outside of my paradigm that I just couldn't, I couldn't grasp it. Um, but lately I'd been listening to a lot of what players like, uh, uh, Louis Dowdswell and, um, Wayne Bergeron, a few other players who talk about how, like, you know, we d doesn't take that much air. And that really kept thinking me, reminding me about, uh, what Jim has talked about, about, uh, you know, not using that much air. And Jim always, you know, he, if you've seen the kind of famous now videos of him on YouTube with, uh, uh, Kevin and um, the guys from the Airman and Note. God dang it, Brian. Kevin and Brian from the Airman and Note. Uh, and Jim's just like, I'm using no air. And, and you know, I, I, it's, I don't think that's meant to be taken literally, but it, it just feels like no air compared to those of us who were taught. You know, I was kind of taught like in the Chicago school, the Arnold Jacobs winning song, big breath, all that kind of stuff. And we really... By playing that way, if if you're if you're the kind of person that's watching a channel like like Trumpet Thoughts, you are probably overblowing. You're probably overblowing. And when if you back way, way off on the air, and get your lips in position to accept the air properly and efficiently, you'd be amazed at how easy it is to play with very little effort. And when we watch our heroes play, whoever your trumpet hero is, likely you just marveled like, gosh, they just make it look so easy. And it's not that it's easy, but it's not anywhere near as hard as how I've been making it. So another thing, and I'll share some of the stuff that I worked on here with you in a minute, but before I do it, there's one other thing that kind of stuck in my head and both um, uh, Maynard Ferguson and I think Wayne Bergeron also had this experience, but they both started on the French horn. And Maynard started on the French horn. And if you think about the, the French horn mouthpiece, it's very, very conical. This, of course, not being a French horn mouthpiece. But it kind of shaped almost like that, very, very conical. And think about as, a, as if you were a child, if you were a, a, a young kid, picking up that instrument for the first time, what do you think your lips would do? Do you think that they would do this and go up against the mouthpiece? Or do you think they would kind of go in a bit? And if you're thinking they'd go in a bit, they totally, they would. They totally would. And so when we think about the playing the trumpet, for me, okay, your mileage may vary, but if you're struggling like I was struggling, this is something to think about. I often had my lips kind of like this, and then when I would blow, I mean, already, there's, there's, it's just backed up. I kind of know it's kind of hard to see because of my beard and stuff. But yeah, my lips are kind of rolled in a bit, and there's all this back pressure, right, just, just from that thing. And so now I think I try that first just to see what that pressure, how bad that feels. This is kind of a Greg Spence thing, mystery to mastery. God, how nice would it be to be able to play the trumpet where it felt like that? 
Never any harder than that. Sorry for my phone dinging here. How nice would that be? How nice would that be if you could play the trumpet like that instead of blowing your full head off like, like I have all these years? So then my lesson with Jim, which I would encourage you to get a lesson with Jim, by the way. It was not very expensive and totally worth it. And uh, But I'll just share a piece of it. And, and honestly, this is you should get the lesson with him. Lead pipe buzzing. We've all done this. Jim talked talk to me about, pretend like you're going to do this lead pipe buzzing like you're playing a concerto for a lead pipe with the New York Philharmonic. Like you want to get the nicest sound you can. And it's a really simple thing. Pl start with like F in the staff and you're doing arpeggio down and um, hang on, I'm pulling up a pitch pipe here. Uh, there we go. And play it like piano, not loud. Don't need a lot of air. Breathe from way down here so all this stays relaxed. You can hear how there was spots in there where it didn't kind of come in clear, so I'm going to keep working on that. Beats, beats a minute roughly for whole notes what you're looking for go down to E and we want to just like let the notes just slide down and you're just doing it nice and quiet it's may sound louder on the camera it's hard to know but it's the lead pipe is not any louder than my voice is right now E flat What do you do when you get that warble? Usually means you're overblowing. That's the number one uh, reason. Not the only reason, but the number one reason for that warble sound, you're overblowing. So ease up on the air. Then pedal C. Then you do those same things and just do it in reverse. And I'm not here doing this for you to show you like I'm an expert. I'm doing this as like almost a practice journal for me. So same thing in reverse. All the way back up to that F. And what you're trying to do, this unlike the stamp exercises where you're trying to do everything very squared off, this one you actually want to glissando everything. Because you want to make sure you're not making any real major adjustments here with your lips. It's all, when you have them in the right position and you're not using much air, these lips are open and they're creating the sound waves. I don't even feel like they're closing all the way. They may be, I don't care, but I feel like they're not. And that's what's keeping the sound going. Work on that at that volume until you're super comfortable with it. Then when you have that comfortable, you can start working on uh, lead pipe buzzing in the upper register. And all, all I'm thinking about doing is using my ear and keeping that aperture tunnel kind of in, in position. I don't want it to do this. Sounds better when it's like that. And then I'm just bringing it slightly closer together and supporting from uh, around my belly button. Just get just slightly more air pressure to get that uh, ninth above. It's an octave and a, and a step, so it's a ninth above. So let's get the right pitch here. So 
F and the staff, and then the, the ninth above it is a G. And then if you want to take the partial of that, it's it's going to be just the D above the staff. We're talking trumpet, B flat trumpet pitch. The goal is to try to really try to make that pretty easy, and and that doesn't feel that difficult, and it's so much easier to play on the trumpet than without. So hopefully try some of those things, okay? If you're if you're stuck in the head game like I often get, uh, go check out Mystery to Mastery and work through his materials. He's got a, a free section that has so much content will blow your mind. But I can tell you, I've subscribed all the way up to his, his top tier level, uh, which is only necessary when you get into that level of content. You can kind of up your subscription as you go. And I found it immensely useful for fixing some of the, the incorrect wiring I had in my head about how to play the trumpet. And it got me ready to understand what Jim Manley was trying to talk to me in my lesson that I have had with Jim. And it has me in a position where I better understand what someone like Wayne Bergeron is doing when Wayne's playing. And I better understand the lessons I've had with Bobby Shue with the things that Bobby was trying to talk to me about, but that I just couldn't. And it's not that they... They're masterful teachers, I'm not saying that, but you know, just sometimes you're just not ready to hear the lesson, you know? You want it, you want to be able to hear the lesson, but you're just not ready. So anyway, give those things a try, back up on the volume. Um, if you're someone that even when you're just like air playing, if you get that kind of sound and hear all this back pressure and, and all that kind of stuff, feel all this back pressure, try just. Here was the key for me, gosh. Sorry, a long video, but I just, I gotta tell you this. Here's a thing for me. I heard, I saw a video that Wayne Bergeron did and he talked about thinking of his lips like oboe reeds. And think about that mental image of what an oboe reed looks like. An oboe reed is two reeds. This could be a whole thing. It should, should be a separate video, really. Two reeds, they face forward. There's a hole in the middle. And the oboe player, when they make their embouchure and they stick that, read inside their thing, they firm around the reed, but they don't squeeze it shut. They have to leave that opening. If they squeeze it shut, the reeds won't vibrate. That's exactly what this is. Our lips are so much like an oboe reed. Anyway, that visualization helped me a lot. Hope it helps you. Good luck.